Paleron Story, Chapter 2. The chair creaked a little as I sat. Mimi, the old granny, stood in the kitchen as our breakfast bubbled on the stove. Elowen was sitting on a chair directly in front of me, sometimes glancing up at me, but immediately looking away when I returned her glance. I moved my chair back, trying to give her space, hoping to make her more comfortable. She slouched a little into the chair and shifted her eyes to her sister, who sat on the bed, brushing her hair. Golden morning light poured in through the window, landing on the small wooden table between Elowen and I. I watched the dust dance in the sun ray and disappear as it left the bounds of the light. Aria finally approached the table, fixing thick hair ties onto the ends of each ponytail as she sat down. She rubbed her eyes and yawned. I glanced back at Elowen, who didn't miss a moment before grabbing onto Aria's arm. Seeing them like this really accentuated the contrast. A thin, frail girl next to Aria's soft form, Elowen's paleness against her sister's healthy pinkish hue. I hoped that, whatever it was, Elowen would soon be able to receive a cure. The floor creaked as Mimi walked to our table, somehow managing to balance all three of our balls in her arms. She placed a ball in front of each of us. The sun shimmered through the rising steam. It was a translucent brown liquid with beans, potatoes, and other various types of vegetables floating in it. Soup. I inhaled the scent, letting it linger. It smelled good. I picked up my spoon, carefully sipping on the hot liquid. I'd forgotten how good human food could taste when I wasn't craving blood. Technically, half vampires like me don't need to drink blood to survive. And at times like this, I could almost believe that. But the doubt has never failed to return as my time away from blood stretched to weeks. Aria stood up from the table. I'm going to change to my day clothes, she said. She walked off, leaving her empty bowl on the table and her little sister alone at the table with me. Eloan avoided eye contact, poking at something in her bowl with a spoon. Her dark purple, almost brown hair clumped into strands as if wet. Yesterday, I'd assumed that it was, in fact, wet, but it had stayed that way since then. It wasn't long before the bathroom door opened and Aria walked out, dressed in the intricate purple dress with black lacy again. Her outfit choices reminds me of being in Doran again, where almost everyone would dress like her, even if they were only going out to the store to pick up milk or eggs. Well said Aria. I am ready now. When you two are ready, we can go for a walk. Elowen glanced at me for a second, before resuming the poking of her food. I lifted my bowl to my mouth and drank the last bit of soup left in it. Outside of the cottage, it was pleasant and bright, and yet the leaves shielded my skin from the sun. Aria held Elowen's hand, and we slowly walked through the forest. It was quiet, the silence only interrupted by gentle bird songs and the rustling of the leaves. I noticed Elowen glance at me again. I tried giving her another smile, and this time she didn't look away. Hello, I said quietly. How old are you? Elowen glanced down. S seven she finally murmured, in a voice so quiet I could barely make out the word. I remember being seven, I said, but now I am fifteen. That's twice as big. Elowen ignored me, looking away again, but Eri gave me a warm smile. I decided not to bother the child anymore, so the rest of our walk continued in silence. It seemed like Eri was very familiar with this place already, I could barely tell the difference between one tree and the next, but she confidently glided through the shrubs and bushes, somehow finding shortcuts and paths I couldn't even see until she led me through them. Soon, we arrived at the stream of water running from a small waterfall. The water softly pattered on the rocks below, flowing into a gently moving pond of water. Elowen let go of Aria's hand, walking closer to the pond. She crouched at the edge of the bank, inspecting the water. I walked up to her slowly, careful not to scare her. What is it in there? I asked. She looked up at me, staring at me as if I didn't belong there, as if I was an unexpected intruder. 
After a moment, she looked back into the water again. Fish, she murmured. I looked closer and, in fact, small silvery fish wriggled in the lake, barely visible between the green clumps of aquatic grass. Elwyn poked her finger into the water and the fish scattered away, disappearing between some rocks. Careful, don't get any of the water into your mouth or eyes, said Aria. You might get sick. Elwyn briefly glanced up at her sister, but promptly looked back at the fish, swirling her finger through the surface of the water, small waves emanating from her gesture. I stepped back, letting her play. Something fluttered in the bushes behind me. I darted my eyes to the source of the sound, spotting a black blur. A bat. I stepped closer carefully, making sure to seem friendly. If it wasn't a bat that I'd met before, I could scare it off. The bat stayed still, its black beady eyes staring up at me. I knew this bat. Have you seen her? I thought. No, not seen. The thought appeared in my head as if not my own, and it wasn't. It was the bat's. Thank you anyway, I thought. The bat wrapped its wings tight around its body and closed its eyes. I decided that I should let it sleep, so I walked back to where Aria was standing. She didn't seem to notice me come closer. Her attention was fixed on her sister, who was still playing by the pond. It's been a year, and even with the hope of bats, I still couldn't find my mom. Was it possible that she was currently sitting at home in Doran, wondering where I went? But it was too late now. I had to search here. I didn't have enough money for a ticket back. Elowen stood up and tugged Aria on her arm, whispering something. Aria looked at me. Elowen's tired. Let's go home, she said. I followed her back to the cottage, through the tangled vines and thick roots. When we returned, Aria sat Elowen down on the bed again, tucking her in. Elowen lay under the blankets for a few minutes until she seemed to sleep. The bedroom door opened abruptly. Mimi poked her head out of the doorway, looking at Aria. The girl will need more medicine, she muttered. Aria, you remember what light work looks like, right? Aria nodded. Go collect it, won't you? Of course, Mimi, Aria said and stood up. The door to Mimi's bedroom shut again and Aria headed past me, towards the exit. She paused in the doorway and turned her head towards me. You're coming, aren't you? She said. I muttered a yes and hurried towards her as she made her way down the few stairs in front of the cottage. I caught up to her. She didn't slow her pace as she headed further into the forest, this time in a completely different direction. Do you know what light work looks like, Taylorum? She asked politely. No, I don't think so. Look for a small plant with elongated leaves, almost like grass, but thicker. The leaves should have a yellow band surrounding the edges. My eyes traced the ground around us. There were plants with rounded leaves, plants with tiny, intricate leaves, but no elongated leaves so far. What should I do if I find one? I asked. Show it to me, and I'll help you identify it, just to check that it's correct. Okay, I said, and continued scanning the surroundings. If someone had asked me how common plants with elongated leaves were, I would have told them that they were quite common. So how come there was not a single plant that matched this description, anywhere to be seen, as we spent minutes walking through the forest? The only elongated leaves on display belonged to grass and, well, Aria did say that the leaves need to be thicker than that of grass, so I didn't bother her with my misidentification. So, I started. What sort of medicines does Mimi make? Mostly potions, that sort of thing. She continued looking around, not making eye contact. Do you always have to find ingredients for her? I would have thought that it would be easier to just buy them from a pharmacy. Yeah, some ingredients can be bought, but a lot can't, she answered. 
Her medicines are a bit more, well, experimental. Not all of her ingredients are seen as legitimate components for a medicine. I nodded, shifting my concentration to the ground below again. Rounded leaves, oval leaves, round leaves again. Oh, exclaimed the area. I turned my head and looked at her. She'd already changed directions, heading off to a sharp left. It's here, she said. Have a look. And there it was, a tuft of slender leaves sprouting from the center. I inspected a leaf, trying to etch it into my memory for future reference. It had an almost the ribbed appearance, with many veins running parallel to each other, straight to the tip. The edges were indeed yellow, but almost shimmered golden whenever a sun ray would hit. Why is it called lightwort? I asked. Aria carefully plucked a leaf close to its base. Well, she said, inspecting it. Once a year, it is meant to produce a beautiful golden flower. It almost looks as if it is a light, if the sun hits it in the correct way. I tried to imagine it. A flower of the same coloring as the shimmery yellow edges on the leaves. I would have to see it someday. Aria carefully held three blades of lightwort in her hand, running a finger along one of the leaves. She looked up at me, gave me a nod, and turned back into the direction from which we came. This is definitely lightwort. We have to bring it to Mimi now. There was no hesitation on Aria's steps as we headed back to the cottage. No stumbling, no tripping over the roots. I only struggled to keep up. If you don't mind me asking, I said, why do you collect novel ingredients for the medicines instead of trusted ones? Aria frowned. We tried the trusted medicines already, for years. None of them worked. I didn't say anything. A moment passed in silence. Mimi had been a doctor for longer than even our parents had been alive, so I trust that she has some expertise. We're simply out of other options. I, I understand, I said. I decided not to ask any further questions, so we walked back in silence. With this pace, it wasn't long until we were back at the cottage. Aria handed Mimi the tuft of leaves. Mimi nodded and smiled. It was a little strange, but I felt almost proud that we'd gotten it correct, that Mimi was satisfied with our foraging, even though I understood that I'd done none of it. I'd simply followed Daria and let her do the job. Mimi started preparing something with the ingredients that we'd brought her, and this time I decided not to watch, just in case. All I managed to witness was Elowen being given the cup of medicine with our evening meal. This time... She didn't grimace as she drank. It must have tasted more palatable, and I was glad. It wasn't long before Aria tucked Elowen back into bed again. It was too early for either of us to sleep, so we sat on the front porch. The sun had set. Stars shimmered through the gaps in the canopy above. I held a hot mug of herbal tea in my hands, letting my body absorb the warmth. Aria took a sip from her own mug. I'm sorry if I've been asking too many questions, I said, but is it okay if I ask another one? What is it? said Aria, in a perfectly polite tone again. I was just wondering, and you don't have to answer, but why are you not with your parents? Aria took another sip from her mug before replying. There's nothing wrong with our parents, if that's what you're wondering. Oh, I said. That's good. I brought the warm liquid to my mouth again. Multiple theories and possibilities flashing through my mind. It wasn't right to guess. If she didn't want to tell me, that was her choice. Actually, began Aria again. We're here because Elowen begged to go to school. Our parents refused, but she refused to let me go alone harder. So, she came. I looked into the stars. I hadn't been in school for a year now, and I did miss learning. At my age, I could self-study in libraries to curb that craving, but Elowen wouldn't have that same opportunity. Still, I couldn't imagine going to school in that condition. And are you too 
Not in school anymore, then? I asked. We technically are, said Aria. We'd just been taking trips here to visit Mimi whenever her symptoms would flare up. Once she feels better, we will come back. The forest was quiet, except for the occasional flutter of bats. I kept my eyes glued to the stars. I hope Elowen can go to school again soon, he said. End of chapter two. You've been listening to Taylor on Story. Thank you for listening, and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss the next chapter.